reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, King Herod laid hands upon some members of the church to harm them. He had James, the brother of John, killed by the sword. When he saw that this was pleasing to the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. It was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He had him taken into custody and put in prison under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. He intended to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter thus was being kept in prison, but prayer by the church was fervently being made to God on his behalf. On the very night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter, secured by double chains, was sleeping between two soldiers while outside the door guards kept watch on the prison. Suddenly, the angel of the Lord stood by him and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and awakened him saying, get up quickly. The chains fell from his wrist. The angel said to him, put on your belt and your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, put on your cloak and follow me. So he followed him out, not realizing that what was happening through the angel was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first guard, then the second, and came to the iron gate leading out to the city, which opened for them by itself. They emerged and made their way down an alley, and suddenly the angel left them. Then Peter recovered his senses and said, Now I know for certain that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were, expe were expecting. Verbum Domini.
Reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I, Paul, am already being poured out like a libation. The time of my departure is at hand. I have completed it well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Verbum da mini. Exius Sancti Evangelii Secundum Mateum. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, blessed are you Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, 
and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Verbum Domini. From the psalm, look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. To be a martyr, a real one, not the kind we roll our eyes about, is to be a witness. First, we must see, experience. We must look to him. We must be drawn into that event which captivates not only our attention, but our heart. For many looked upon Jesus, but not all were saved. As Peter sat beside the blazing fire in the court of the high priest, his heart was filled with smoke. A simple question now by a lowly handmaid do you know him? Are you with him? And we remember the vehement response, I do not know him. I do not know what you are saying. And the cock crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord and he went out and wept bitterly. Sadly, he would not make it to the foot of the cross. His cross would come later. And in that moment, Peter was not looking upon Christ. He was not willing to be with him just yet. He still, as just hours before, grasped at the sword of self-will, self-determination, even determination of who the Christ would be, what Jesus the beloved would do. Saul, for his part, needed the scales to fall from his eyes that he would be transformed into Paul, the apostle to the Gentiles. In the encounter with the event, who is Jesus Christ, was blindingly glorious. Saul had been assured of his own righteousness, the Pharisee, until the Lord humbled him such that he would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. What changed is the revelation of the passionate love of Jesus Christ, who though rich above all God, he humbled himself in taking the form of a slave, being crucified in the fervent adoration of his precious heart. His blood, the blood of Jesus, poured forth as the witness, the martyrdom, to the consuming fire of God and the worthiness of the Father. In his earlier rule, St. Francis of Assisi wrote, in the present he speaks, they must rejoice, that is ourselves, they must rejoice when they live among the poor and the powerless. Let them remember, moreover, that our Lord Jesus Christ was not ashamed. He was poor and a stranger and lived on alms. And often we assert with the strong vehemence that the poor, the powerless are out there. And we fear to claim that birthright as our own 
especially for we who have sinned greatly, that we ourselves are the poor and the powerless. But he who is rich sold all and gave to the poor, poor himself throughout his entire life, having nowhere to lay his head, and he gave up his spirit, the spirit which is poured into our hearts, the love of God that we too may be transformed by that hidden sweetness that we now find in the most holy Eucharist. Looking upon him now, just as Peter and Paul looked upon him, although in such different ways, look upon him that you, that we may be radiant with joy in our faces not be, not blush with shame, that we too so often forget him who is so often forgotten. So to look upon him, to be with him, that we too would be martyrs, the witnesses to the infinite, the loving uh, mercy of God. 